It's Wednesday, June the 13th, and this is your Barbados Today Evening News Update. So glad you could join us. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Topping the news at this hour, Prime Minister Mia Motley leads a four-member Barbados delegation to Washington this evening for talks with Managing Director of the International Monetary Fund, Christine Lagarde. The delegation includes Chief Economic Counselor to the Minister of Finance, Economic Affairs and Investment Ambassador, Dr. Clyde Maskell, Director of Finance and Economic Affairs, Ian Carrington, and Central Bank Governor Cleveston Haynes. In a brief statement, the Barbados Government Information Service also revealed that Minister of Housing, Lands and Rural Development, George Payne, will perform the functions of Prime Minister while Motley is away. Barbados is currently in discussions with the IMF on a balance of payments support program. Ahead of her departure, the Prime Minister announced that the island's ports of entry are in line for some upgrades. She made the disclosure as she addressed the annual general meeting of the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association today at the Lloyd Erskine Sandiford Centre. Motley told the gathering she has already been discussing the matter with tourism industry officials and over the next two weeks she will be holding talks with officials at the Grantley Adams International Airport to iron out the details. I've already spoken to the social partnership and alerted them and the Minister of Tourism and International Transport has agreed to be the lead in organizing it but we will meet with all of the workers at the Grant Adams International Airport over a two-day period within the next few weeks. And we will do it because I believe that if something is not working to the best of what we think it should be working, the best way to deal with it is to talk to those who are on the front line first before we get in a room and start to hypothesize as to what can be done and what can't be done. But the simple mission of our meeting is how do we make the visitor experience and the returning experience for Barbadians the best experience in the hemisphere, if not the world, at Grant the Adams Airport. Chief Executive Officer of the BHTA, Rudy Grant, welcomed the move. In his report, he noted that there were improvements at the airport last year and he's anxious to see more. I do have to report that recently we have seen an improvement and we have been given the assurance that further improvements will be coming. We would have worked with the Ministry of Tourism providing support to ensure that there were expansion in terms of the numbers of immigration officers. We would have worked closely with the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. as well. In other news, the clerical officer who stole over a million dollars from the psychiatric hospital, which was held at the Central Bank of Barbados, has been sentenced to 10 years in prison. Madam Justice Michelle Weeks today handed down the sentence on 43-year-old Anderson Ryan Ince of Hannes St. Lucy in the number two Supreme Court. Last October, a jury found Ince guilty of theft and money laundering of $1.1 million belonging to the Black Rock St. Michael Hospital sometime between August 1, 2003 and August 1, 2005. Today, he was slapped with 10 years on each count, which will run concurrently. However, he only has 9 years, 111 days remaining to serve at Dodds Prison, having spent 254 days on remand. It was a busy day for the fire officers at the Barbados Fire Service. They had to battle a blaze at the site of the Four Seasons Hotel project, situated on the grounds of the old Paradise Beach Hotel. When the Barbados Today team arrived at the scene just after 1.30, the fire was isolated to the wooden roof of the abandoned building. Chief Fire Officer Errol Maynard gave reporters a full update. We had a call here at Paradise uh, approximately 13 to to a fire in the roof of the building. So far there are five roofs on fire. We have tried to stop from spreading because it mainly there are only the roofs here to burn. The other part of the building is under construction. And this is concrete, we cannot be burned, but we have 15, sorry, six water tenders and 18 officers here on site battling this fire. Any 
any indication as to where it started? Uh, that has not been uh, ascertained as yet. Um, any challenges to the extinguishing? Well, yes, because it's a construction site. And therefore, we, do, we are trying not to have anyone injured or losing any of the equipment because the fire is in the roof and it's difficult to get there. There's no other infrastructure available that you can use. So it's posing a challenge. And then we have to shuttle water to the site because there's no water in the area. So you have to shuttle water. As Parliament continued debate on the budget today, Minister of Small Business, Entrepreneurship and Commerce, Dwight Sutherland, hits back at the former government minister, Donville Innes, who yesterday called on Prime Minister Mia Motley to tell the country how much her government is paying out to consultants. As he made his contribution to today's budget debate, Sutherland said the former government had a lot to answer for and insisted that the costs associated with the government's new team was far less than the cost of corruption under the former Democratic Labour Party administration. I don't hear him trying to equate or trying to determine where the Prime Minister will get the money from for these bright minds that she, she has asked to assist this brilliant team. And I would say to the former member for sin, James South, tell me the cause of corruption under the last administration. Millions of dollars. And I'm sure when we work it out, the Honourable Member for Christchurch East Central and the Honourable Member for St. Michael's South Central, along with the Prime Minister and the brilliant economic team, Ambassador Maskell and, and the others, when they work it out. And we put a cause to the cause of corruption under the last administration. That cause is indeed more than the cause of the remuneration or the salaries for every single 30 member of the Barbados Civil Party team that won the last election. Grenadian Dwayne Clark is the winner of this year's Craig Nurse Memorial Scholarship Award. The 30-year-old, the first non-national to receive the honor, was awarded today at the Caribbean Catalyst, Inc. Caribbean Catalyst, Inc. established the Craig Nurse Memorial Scholarship in 2015. The award is given to an individual with a disability who has successfully completed at least year one of the post-secondary school education in any field and who is continuing his or her formal education at a recognized tertiary institution. Now, Clark, a final year student who is pursuing a Bachelor of Science in Economics and Finance at the University of the West Indies Cafield campus, was diagnosed as hearing impaired at the age of 10. He was overjoyed at the receiving the scholarship and used the occasion to encourage other students living with disabilities. The persons with a disability is to believe in yourself. You too can achieve your dream. You too can do it. The persons with a disability, we need your understanding and patience together we can do it. Receiving this Craig Nurse Memorial Scholarship Award enables me to cover my the expenses incurred, such as books and other educational expenses. But above all, that helped me achieve my dream. There's regional and international news after this short break. Welcome back with news from the region now in Trinidad and Tobago. There are troubling revelations that children as young as 12 years old are being trafficked for sex. The claim comes from Director of the Counter Trafficking Unit at the Ministry of National Security, Elena Wheeler, who said children are at great risk and every citizen must seek to protect children. We could choose to bury our heads in the sand and say, well, it's not happening to me and it doesn't bother me. Or we can choose to challenge yourself in a new financial year and say, well, we're going to take up a project that looks at dealing 
with anti-child trafficking in Trinidad and Tobago. We could take up a project that looks at dealing with the sexual exploitation of children. On the international scene, the United States is hoping to see a major disarmament by the North Korea by the end of 2020. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo made the comments at a day after an unprecedented meeting between President Donald Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un in Singapore. In a statement, North Korea agreed to work towards complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. However, the document has been criticized for lacking details on when or how Pyongyang would give up its weapons. Pompeo is hopeful the two sides can achieve major disarmament in two and a half years. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We are also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic evening.